This is a demo of deploying Hadoop clusters with VMware Big Data Extension and native HDFS integration with EMC Isilon. VMware Big Data Extension is a set of management tools that automates the deployment of Hadoop clusters within a virtual environment. VMware Big Data Extension is available as a free download from VMware and is deployed as an OVA within your environment. Once the OVA is deployed, you will then have a VMware Big Data Extension tab available to you through the vSphere web client. We click on the tab to begin configuration of the extension. The first thing we see is a summary page. In the summary page, we can see the connected vCenter server and also the connected Serengeti vApp. We'll switch over to the client for a second and take a closer look at the deployed OVA. The OVA deploys two VMs, a management VM that has an easy configuration wizard during deployment and a template that is used to deploy all of the different machines that make up the Hadoop cluster. The extension needs access to resources for node deployment. It needs to know what type of storage to place the nodes on. In this case, we have both shared and local. We'll use local for the workers and we'll use shared storage to protect the management VM of the Hadoop cluster and it also needs networking resources. We can choose to attach it to a port group that has a DHCP server so that every node during the Hadoop configuration phase is given an IP from a DHCP server, or we can create a specific pool that will hand out IPs to the different nodes during deployment. Big Data Extension supports multiple Hadoop 1.0 distributions, including Pivotal, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and Apache. The initial deployment of the OVA has Apache pre-configured. Before we deploy our first cluster, we'll want to configure our Isilon array to be used for native HDFS integration. So we'll switch over to our 1FSN login screen for our Isilon cluster. HDFS stands for the Hadoop Distributed File System. When HDFS is enabled on an Isilon cluster, it supports both the data node and the name node, and functions as a protocol. This eliminates the need to run the data node and name node services on the Hadoop cluster. Both the Hadoop data and metadata is stored on the 1FS file system. HDFS is available as a free license from any Isilon or EMC rep. To enable the license, you just click the About bar, and once you get to the screen about this cluster, you can see we have all our different license and cluster information. In this demo, we've already activated our HDFS license, but once you've acquired a license from your Isilon rep, all you have to do is plug in the key here, and HDFS is now enabled on your Isilon cluster. By using Isilon for HDFS, we now have a central repository accessible to our Hadoop cluster. On top of that, we also have a way of using NFS or SMB to ingest data into Hadoop by taking one of the directories within our 1FS file system and sharing it as either NFS or SMB for data upload. We can explicitly control which directories HDFS has access to. We're going to SSH into our Isilon box. And once we're SSH'd in, we're going to run a few simple commands. The first command we're going to run will show us that HDFS is indeed enabled. We enter the ISI HDFS command, and we get a return of the status of HDFS within our Isilon cluster. As you can see here, our root path is slash IFS. This is the root of the one FS file system. For our demo, we want to change that to the already created Hadoop directory, and we enter the ISI HDFS root path command to tell it that, to go into the Hadoop directory. Now HDFS has access to the Hadoop directory, which we've previously shared as an NFS export. We now have the ability to use NFS to import data into our Hadoop cluster for use by HDFS. We are now ready to deploy our first cluster. We switch back to the web client and we choose the deploy button on the big data cluster list. A pop-up comes up asking us for information about our cluster. The first thing we enter is a descriptive name. Next, we can choose the distribution that we want to use for our Hadoop deployment. We also choose the type of deployment we want to do. In this case, since we'll be utilizing Isilon, we only want big data extension to deploy compute nodes and will allow those nodes to use the HDFS protocol to connect to the Isilon storage array. To do that, we enter the data store URL. The format is HDFS slash slash 
fully qualified domain name of the Isilon cluster, and then the port 8020. This information will be placed onto every node within our cluster. We then configure the different nodes that make up our cluster. The first one is the compute master. We can choose small, medium, or large for deployment, or we can customize it, and that gives us the ability to decide what type of storage we want to put that on. For our master node, we're going to want to put that on shared storage because in the virtual environment, we'll want it protected by HADRS. Our worker nodes are basically disposable. They'll run our map reduce jobs, but they don't need to be backed up or protected in any form. We're going to set the number for four so that we'll deploy one to every ESX host within our cluster. Finally is the optional client node. This client node gives us access to the Hadoop cluster. We then choose which resources we want to utilize. So we choose the resource pool we want to do the deployment to, and we choose the network that we want to use. Once this information is all entered, we hit OK, and our deployment begins. We can see the deployments kick off in our vSphere web client screen. And if we expand that, we can see that this deployment will take up a total of six VMs, four workers, one compute master, and one client. And we'll switch over to our vClient screen. And you can see within that resource pool, we have a couple different sub-resource pools. One contain the worker, one contain the master, and one contain the client. And these are all deployed from the template within the vApp. Okay, we fast forward and we can see that our Hadoop cluster is now deployed and up and running. We click on it to get the details of the nodes that were deployed. We can see that our compute master, our worker nodes, and our client nodes have all been deployed. We can see the VM names they were given. We can see the host they were deployed to, the IP address assignments that were given to them, and that they're ready for service. We've now deployed a complete Hadoop cluster very simply through a couple of steps and answering a couple of questions. Now we'll want to run a simple program to show the functionality of Hadoop. The first thing we do is click on one of our ESX hosts. Earlier we'd shared the Hadoop directory on the Isilon cluster as an NFS export to all of our ESX hosts within this environment. We go click on it and we're going to upload a big text file into the input directory within the NFS Hadoop directory. Once we've uploaded that, we'll go click on the Hadoop client. We log on to the client, and we're going to use HDFS to access the same data that we uploaded through NFS. First, we'll start by running a simple Hadoop command that shows us the HDFS directory. As you can see, the directory structure that we see is the same directory structure we saw through the NFS share. We now directly list the input directory and we can see the text documented that we just uploaded. So now we're going to run a simple word count application. Word count is available on every client deployed within Hadoop. We specify the actual command, word count. And then we tell it the input directory of the data that we want to count. And then we tell it where we want it to output. Word count is a simple application that basically goes and looks at text files, one or more, and then counts all the different words by using the map reduce commands. And then gives us an output that we place in the output directory. So we kick this off and the map reduce command begins. And it begins sorting and counting all the different words within that text document. This is a very simplistic way of looking at some of the power of how Hadoop can do big data analytics for you. Okay, so now the command starts to run and it finishes off and we can see the amount of output records that it created. So let's go take a closer look at this. First thing we'll do is we'll hop back into the web client and switch back to the cluster list. And you can see on every cluster we have a list of actions that we can run against a cluster. What we're going to want to do is open up the map reduce page. And we have some information about the map reduce command that we just run. We saw some summaries of the cluster, some scheduling information, any jobs that are running, and we can see the com some completed jobs. So let's click on the job that we just ran. And here's all the information about that job. We can see the file name, who submitted it, which host used it, whether it was successful, uh, we can see percentage completed of the different tasks, 
and then we can see all the map commands and all the reduce commands and how long it took to run. So let's actually go take a closer look at the output. So we'll hop onto the NFS share, we'll browse the data store, we'll click the output directory, we'll dig into it a little bit, and then there's the file, the output file. So let's download that to our desktop. Once it's downloaded, we'll use Notepad to open it up. And word count had gone and into that text file and counted every word that it found within the text file and the amount of times it saw it, and it creates it in a comma delimited formatted. So we open this up with Notepad, and we can actually see all of the different words that were counted within that document and the number of times it saw that word. So we can not only look at it as a text file, we can also hop back into the client and take a, a closer look at it by using a simple grep command. So we hop back into the client and we're going to run another Hadoop command. First thing we'll do is actually use HDFS to look at the same file. So we'll run the Hadoop command and we'll actually go take a list of the output directory uh, under HDFS. So Hadoop file system, lists, Hadoop, output. And we'll see that file that we just took a look at through the NFS share. And then finally, let's just use cat to take a closer look at this file. So what you've seen in this demo is a very, very simple way to get a Hadoop cluster up and running in your environment. By utilizing the big data extension for the automated deployment and Isilon for the integrated HDFS, we can create very simple, very easy to use Hadoop clusters that can be deployed in a matter of hours. If you have any other questions, please go to bigdatablog at emc.com.